Container, container, used to be wild pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everard. Everard, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there. How can I help you, mister? I see you are not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know, and folks gotta eat. Bye-bye now. Oh, most of the guys are down at the gates, keeping the scabs from coming in. Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. Yes, yes. Everybody needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way. Leonard Bellick. But everyone calls me Leo. Oh, you want Mr. Everard, then? He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived their entire lives in this here neighbourhood. Guys like Mr. Everard and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Made Martinez what it is today. Mr. Everard and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were boys. Mr. Edgar is Mr. Everard's brother. He looks a bit younger, he does. But a very smart fellow. Very smart fellow indeed. He's away on some union business. Not even in Revishaw, they say. All kinds of places he visits. Him and his brother both do when they're on a vacation. Right now, it's Mr. Everett's turn to look after the union. But last year, he spent a whole winter in South Africa. <laughs> huh? Sure, mister. What is it? Oh, Mr. Everett is where he always is. In his office, of course. Had an arithmetics teacher, Miss Bellows. <laughs> Her real name was Miss Bellums. She was a real pretty lady. But when she got mad... <laughs> All the boys liked her, if you know what I mean, mister. We used to sneak in her yard in the dark and peek through the window. One time we saw Miss Bellows with a fellow. Yes, we did. Yes, we did, mister. Then was naked, too. That's all I got to say about that. Yes, we did. We did, mister. Indeed, we did. Him was a big, big fellow. Used to drive the troika near houses, school and everything. Then was all naked, too. That's all I got to say about that. I'm like Mr. Everett's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is out of town and Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Everard is away. <laughs> but I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here, and I'm always busy keeping things running here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Oh, Lizzie, she is a real sharp tool. Mr. Everard put her through some fancy school and everything, east of the river. Four years she was gone, and when she came back, she was all fancy and lawyerly. But she's a real nice girl. Grew up in this here neighbourhood. Knows everybody and gets along with everyone. Real pillar of the community one day, I'm sure. Dr. Lemaitre said so. And she knows about such things. Been a doctor for almost 50 years, she has. Mr. Everett doesn't really want me to talk to people about union guys. But who did you want to talk about? But Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble and Everett sent them on a nice vacation. For a week or so. Like what, mister? Well, oh, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's union business. Him and his boy stirred up something in town. Probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everett telling them to take some time off. I guess the boys got a bit too rowdy and had to let out some steam. I don't really know the details. That's just how boys are, you know. <laughs> I haven't been in a fight since I was in middle school. I remember I was the runt of the class. <laughs> the bigger boys always used to pick on me. You see... I had a bit of a temper back in the day. Flew off the handle like nobody's business. But Mr. Everett and his brother always came to help. Once they beat old Noel Becker so bad he needed stitches on his head. <laughs> Noel never started another fight with anyone after this. Mr. Everett and Mr. Edgar are real nice guys, mister. You should go talk to Mr. Everett. I'm sure you'll be good friends. He's friends with everyone around here. <coughs> He's a union man through and through. Good guy. He's very calm, laid back, doesn't do much, talks to Everett sometimes. Oh, he's really something. <laughs> he doesn't talk much to me usually, but when he does, I don't really understand most of what he's saying. Actually, I don't think he would like me running my mouth about him like that. Who do you mean, mister? Container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. I don't know anyone like this, mister. Maybe he's one of Mr. Everett's fancy friends. He knows all kinds of fancy people with suits and purdy carriages. 
Oh, Titus is a longshoreman through and through. He was born on a boat, they say. His veins are probably filled with salt water, I tell you. <laughs> nice, friendly sort old Titus is. Ah, uh, I'd best not. I mean, I could, but I don't think Mr. Everett would like it very much. You better ask him yourself, mister. The night guard? Ooh, he's a peculiar fellow. He's the strong, silent type, you could say. We talk all the time, but I don't really know much about him. He plays patank with my old human studies teacher, Mr. Martin, down at the plaza. I think he's the only fellow who actually knows old Rene. Uh, sure, mister. What can Leo do for you? Oh, hey, mister. I knew he'd be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They can only get so far before they're aching to get back. And lots of folk really did keep coming back. Oh, hey, Mr. Harry. It sure is nice of you to help out Mr. Everett like you've been doing. He's so awfully busy most days. He doesn't even eat the turnip porridge me missus sends him every day. She makes it with lots of butter and sliced sausage, she does. It's delicious. Oh, mister, I do a lot more than that. I really do most everything around here. Mr. Everett said many times I'm irreplaceable. Well, thanks a lot. Coming from you, it means a lot, really. Sure, mister. About what? Oh, I don't know, mister. They say it's some chemicals. Most of them have labels on them, I think. Oh, no trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. No, not really. Mr. Everett doesn't tell me all the big things. Says I go and tell them to everyone. Sometimes I feel some of the guys don't really get how much I bust my ass for them here. But you guys are all right. If me missus and me was to have a child, I'd be real happy if she turned out like her. But she can't have kids. Actually, Miss Beaufort is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. <laughs> a real pretty lady with a skin like those Douai Sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. Them are real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done and me and the missus sit down besides the radio. We're on a strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. Ha! <laughs> we haven't worked for two months now. <laughs> Not everyone is down there, of course. Mr. Everard is in his office, where he always is. And Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. Sure is, mister. Sure is. Really livens up the place. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Just some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. Sure, mister. Absolutely. I'm always willing to help out nice fellows such as yourself. Oh, hey, mister. I'm not going to bother you with a long greeting, just like we talked about before. I know you're probably a buzzy, buzzy man being an important police officer and all. And personally, I think the more people keeping the peace, the better. No trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. It's like that old saying goes, wisdom withers if not shared. And old Leo is always up for sharing. Mr. Harry! Boy, old Leo sure was right about you. I knew you was a union man at heart when I first saw you. Right as I turned around and looked at you, I said to myself, now that fellow is a union man right there, through and through. And I was right. Yes, I was. Yes, I was. It's true. It's true. I've had an eye for helpful people for as long as I remember. I like helpful people. And I like helping helpful people. So what do you need, mister? Oh, no, mister. You've already done so much for the union. The union is in your debt, for sure. So how can I help you, mister? Sure thing, mister. I'm always ready to help out a helpful person such as yourself. Folks have got to help each other out, right? Oh, absolutely, mister. What do you want to know? Yes, yes. I'm taking it to them. The borscht keeps them happy and in fighting spirits. Makes you all warm inside. They brew it in the whirling in rags. It's very, very good. Makes a man feel so warm and happy. I feel like I could take on Mr. Renadan's boar dogs every time the lunch is done. Sure, sure. How can I help you? No, I don't think they killed anyone. Let's better talk about something else. Titus and his boys do good work. I don't want to get them in trouble over a little drinking. Yeah, sure. I'm glad to answer. I'm not sure what a fixer is, but she is a real nice girl. Smart as a whip, too. Thank you. Eh, almost forgot. Mr. Everard is in that container over there. I got distracted telling the story, but he's in there. They lived on the same street their entire lives. Even dated the same girl on and off for as long as I can remember. <laughs> Strange fellows. Mr. Martin was always real nice to me in school. I remember once. Sure. 
Who did you have in mind? Mr. Martin, yes. Don't really remember much about him. I was just a boy back then. Left with the first autumn rains and didn't come back before the trees were green again. <laughs> oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded up. Oh, yes, yes. I leave all kinds of notes for myself. That old head of mine ain't so good at keeping things in no more. I almost forgot about the borscht. Of course, mister. I'm more than happy to be helpful. Oh, yes. I've been taking special whirling borscht to the men every day since the strike started. <laughs> oh, the whirling's cook. He makes it. Them is always talking with Mr. Manana in that weird language and laughing together. He doesn't speak what we speak. He's from Grad. Oh, I did, mister. <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. Oh, sure, mister. Sure. You do that. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Born and raised in Irish, mister. Mum had to leave my dad after he got a bit violent. Took us here to the new, new world. I was about ten then. Too old to lose my accent then. People say us Ubies are up to all sorts of trouble with sheep and other animals and whatnot. I just want you to know there was never any of that where I come from. No, sir. Those are just nasty rumours. Thank you, mister. Eh, almost forgot. Mr. Everard is usually in that container over there, but he already left for the day. He never stays after 10 p.m. Thank you. Eh, almost forgot. Mr. Everard is usually in that container over there, but he usually leaves around 10 p.m., so you gotta be quick if you wanna catch him. Oh, Mr. Everard is usually in his office, of course, but he already left for the day. He always leaves around 10 p.m. Oh, Mr. Everard is usually in his office, of course. But you gotta be quick if you want to see him. He leaves around 10 p.m. Honestly, I don't know what he does for us, but it must be important because everybody likes him. Yes, they do. I think that's what he does. He makes everyone feel a little better. Once he said he's a dragon to this mob fellow who came picking a fight with some union men. Huh. <laughs> I think he really believes Jean-Luc was a dragon because he ran right off. Another time he almost killed another guy, but I shouldn't talk about that. The night guard, he was a peculiar fellow, headstrong and proud. We didn't really talk all that much. He died recently, something with his ticker.